everybody. Welcome to Wine Antics Live. Happy Thursday. I hope you guys have a drink in hand, whether that's wine, beer, spirits, coffee, water, kombucha. I don't know where you are. I don't make any judgments. It's uh, Thursday and we do Wine Antics Live every Thursday, Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Let's get that right. And I'm Jen. I am the personality, the craziness, the antics half of the antics at least behind wine antics the other half my better half some would say in a very platonic sense is stub from cork envy looking around for something that he doesn't know where it is are you still muted stub yes you are oh apparently there I am. we no, go I was looking around to share the show out because we're live now live 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 thursday 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 <laughs> Uh, so how how's your day been, Stub? Uh, I've had a pretty good day. I was yeah. very productive. Got a lot of laundry done, some work stuff, a little editing on audio and video, a little writing. You know, had a good day. I had a really really good day. Little little podcasting, little editing. Yeah, did, did yeah got 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 the latest uh, one bourbon one charter one beer podcast up, uh, which you can find at one bourbon one charter one beer on any of the stuff that you know you search. On webs, in, the all internet, over the internet books the itunes <laughs> the you know i don't know yeah all the stuff you can find that go go find it oh we had a great guest this week we had uh monique sultani okay. of wine otv was our <gasps> did you really we did indeed and uh kern, kern was the umpire and she competed against me and i won't uh, give away whether her she or i not her, right? she or I, uh, won this episode. But Kern, we uh, did Kern's first ever, or the first of three-part playlist, uh, 26 songs about 26 women, and one song about 44 women. I think that's how he titled it. That's so, yeah. That we did, uh, seems songs like a lot. Titled with women's <laughs> names. No, we only did nine of them, okay. as we did on the show. But uh, yeah, it was a great episode. Great having Monique on. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Hoping she returns the favor. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe we can be on Wino TV at some point. Very nice. Well, yeah. I will hope for that. I will hope of for course. the best. Yeah, Monique's great. No, it was great, great time. Other than that, just been hanging out. How, cool. Did how you know that today that? is National Beer Lovers Day? National Beer Lovers Day. What? Yes. Who Who among us drinks beer? Uh, oh, I mean, hold on. Probably both of us today. <laughs> What is happening right here? Oh, look, that's a great return beer in the stub beer mug. <laughs> Very I've nice. Got all the beverages tonight. Very well played, sir. Very well mm -hmm. played. Um, so today, as you can tell by the title here, we are talking about storage. And, you know, you know, I had to add some kind of TV flair to it because storage and talking about storage isn't super sexy by any any regard. Um, this is a very typical picture of how wine is stored in the basement in the dark deep caves barrel uh fermented um and i thought and, and even whiskey whiskey very similarly can be stored this way rum True. as well so i thought that, that put, beer actually oh it's uh, and beer yes mm -hmm. getting yeah yeah, that's true. That's super popular these days in whiskey barrels and wine barrels and just giving it some age and complexity to it. So look at that. I, yeah. I hit all three and I didn't even think about it. Winner for me. <laughs> so t what's that stuff? I said indeed. I'm sorry. Indeed. Did not mean to disturb. You had a flow going. I, didn't I know. Mean to just just yeah. interrupting me left and right. What's going I on tonight? All the time. I know. I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible. So um, when we're talking about storage, and uh, it is a war. It's a little bit of a war. It's a, it's a weird analogy, but it's a war against uh, time and uh, degradation of the quality of your beverage, right? So there's no wrong way to store wine. There's no wrong way to store beer. There's no wrong way to store spirits. There are only ways to store it so you can better preserve it. And that's my very PC <laughs> response to what people say oh i should be doing this and i should be doing that and i should be doing that well yeah you could be doing all of these things to to create this ideal scenario that your wine or your beer or your spirits are going to last longer but you don't have to do it right you could you could leave it out in your car you could leave it on the side of the road it's only going to be good for about 20 minutes but you could do it that's fast <laughs> 
Depending on the temperature, of course, that's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> so what are, we're going to start off with the basics here, Stub. Sure. What are some of the basic factors that help you to store wine for a longer period of time? Yeah, so wine is a good thing. And I want to start with uh, usually a point of sale, if we can do that. Okay. Uh, a lot of us will, we will visit wineries. And especially if we're visiting in the, you know, spring, definitely the summer and early fall, what we don't realize sometimes is that our vehicles get very warm. We see all these warnings about leaving, you know, dogs and children in car, in cars and how long they'll last or be preserved, uh, not to get morose about things. But what happens is your vehicles get very warm very quickly, even in more moderate temperatures. So a lot of us, if we're visiting wine shops, especially on a Saturday when there's several wine tastings throughout our towns or visiting wineries, we will purchase wine, leave it in the vehicle. What happens is that vehicle gets very hot very quickly. And especially with wine, uh, that is not good for your wine. Um, what are the three enemies of wine, Jen? I, I, I know we mentioned those, but it's heat and light. Well, the two enemies really are heat and light. Those are the two things that will destroy wine. So if you leave wine in a vehicle that's even moderately warm, you don't have a lot of time before it's going to basically uh, turn to vinegar right in the bottle. You can have the best bottle of wine you ever bought at a winery or a wine shop, leave it in the car for a little bit. Some of my favorite wine shops actually have signs on the door saying, if you purchase wine, don't leave it in your vehicle at all, <laughs> period. Yeah. Because what happens is they'll get these wines returned saying, this tasted great in the store, but it tastes terrible now. Mm -hmm. And what happened is people left in their car for 30 minutes when they went to the next wine shop or stopped to get groceries or their prescription at CVS or Rite Aid. And by the time they get home, they've left that wine in the car over several periods of time for 20 to 30 minutes at a time. And that wine will actually turn to vinegar. And it's not even good vinegar. That's the other thing. It's just, it's, it's crappy vinegar at that point. So I, that's my first tip is don't leave wine in your vehicle for any extended period of time. So, Yes, heat and sunlight mm -hmm. and oxidiza oxidization. That it was a yes. hard, yeah, hard word. Yeah, that's the third thing. Third one. If so, you don't open the wine, you don't have to worry about that yet, though. Yeah. Well, we'll get. Well, I mean, <laughs> most of us aren't buying wine quite that old that we have to worry about uh, oxidizing. Uh, you don't have to worry about oxid oxidization after purchase, but yes. <clears throat> So we'll get to that in a bit, actually. I've had stuff. one sip of beer and I can already not say the words. This is going well. But yes, so those three things, heat, light, and oxygen, basically, are the biggest enemies when it comes to wine and being able to store wine for longer periods of time. And that's not that's glossing past the, you, you know, how is the wine made um, and how long is that wine supposed to age? We're not even touching on those two factors. We're just talking about any basic wine that you pick up. Now, Stubb mentioned you don't want to leave it in a car, and that's why I put this picture up there. There's two places that you shouldn't leave a car, or leave wine, beer, or spirits, just to kind of store, kind of sitting out there. And I found this great little picture uh, for three reasons. There are three reasons why I picked this picture. Number one, don't store it in a car. Number two, don't store your beer, wine, or spirits in a hot garage. Okay. <laughs> it's one of the factors that it goes back to. It goes back to heat. Heat is bad. Sunlight is bad. And then number three, if this place, if you were in this place in the dark, I'm looking at this picture, this looks like some place where an axe murderer is going to come and get you. You don't want to be killed on your way to get your wine. So that looks like a, <laughs> what, 70s-ish model. I'm trying to see the hood ornament. That looks like a, a 70s-ish Mercedes in the garage there we'll, we'll go with that either way uh, imagine I'm this looking. scene dark um, nobody wants to get killed i don't know i feel <laughs> like i i feel like i would sit down next to the tallest weed there and have a great conversation in the dark yeah of course because no. look, you, you have brick walls on either side like and and you have the garage behind no. you if there's nothing in the garage no one's coming after you I, but from the front mm, you face forward mm -mm. You have a great perimeter. No one's going to bother you there. Nope. Nope. I don't agree. I do not agree. I feel like this is a place you're going to get killed. I'm sorry. I Carla, I, I see you're like here. Hello, Chris Bell. What's version of my garage, Jen? That, maybe, that's, maybe I just see what I want to see. Please, somebody out there, vouch for me. This looks like a place where you get murdered. I'm just saying. 
because <laughs> in the dark, this looks like a place to that it would get worried. Okay, so whether whether you're not going to or you are going to get murdered in this place, don't store it where, you know, you're afraid to go get it or where it's going to be, again, exposed to sunlight or heat. And garages and cars are are you know great places for storage you know have a have an emergency kit have some extra clothes have um warning flashers or something like that in in these places but not wine beer or spirits that's that's what i'm saying i mean it seems <laughs> weird to me i carry around insulated bags and or coolers with me all the time uh just in case i decide to stop somewhere to buy some uh lovely beverage to bring home whether they be cold chilled already or room temperature i always have insulated bags in my vehicle that's a good guess you can fold those things that's a good tip you can fold those things down flat keep them in your trunk keep them under a seat doesn't matter you get one the size that you need whether it be for growlers half a case a whole case of wine uh the liquor little little less important for the heat and light uh after after you know in the bottle as a finished product but yeah, it never hurts to put it in there. And if you have those things tucked under your seat or you have a cooler, even in the hot weather, cold weather, you're going to keep those things relatively uh, for a relatively uh, decent amount of time. If you're traveling from purchase to home, you'll, you'll keep them at appropriate temperature at which you don't alter them. And I'm talking a little bit longer, longer term storage. I, I know I know people and I may have done it in the past where I have stored wine in a garage because sometimes in some climates it's cooler in there than it is a lot of other places. And it actually doesn't get a whole lot of sunlight. But for the long term, it's probably not your best scenario because all of these, all of these beverages, wine, beer and spirits mm -hmm. prefer to be at a certain temperature. They're kind of like me where I would like to be stored and live permanently somewhere between 55 and 65 degrees is actually my comfort zone and that is fahrenheit that's where the the general range and recommendation these are not serving temperatures these are storing temperatures and these are said to be room temperature yes and room temperature i think came to us from i don't know let's let's go with uh game of thrones time whenever that was right that was it was like the 1600s we, we had no indoor uh, conditioning of air or regulation of temperature. So room temperature was always about 60. We had large bricks. I mean, those things were what, like a foot wide. So yeah, everything was always a little chilled, even if it was warm outside. Now you went inside, it was definitely humid, which is another thing we can get into in a moment, especially with regards to wine. Um, yeah, pretty interesting though. Room temperature is not room temperature that we think in the U.S. most of the time. Because we are pansies here. We, we want the temperature we want. We don't like being uncomfortable at all. Right, Jen? No, we don't. I like 55 to 65, and I like a cold beer. I, I put up that some... freezing most people out, 55 to 65. Mm -mm. I've been out of Florida too darn long, apparently. I just, I like it 55 to 65. Um, and that goes into a, a discussion of how people like beer served. Um, I put out a question on my Facebook page, and th there was this overwhelming response that, you know, storage in terms of... Uh, how right before I want to drink it, like maybe I'll keep it in, um, maybe I'll keep it in another room or in the basement. And then I want to pop a beer in the refrigerator, uh, maybe for 20 minutes in the refrigerator, and then maybe another 10 minutes in the freezer, because we really at least as Americans, we really like cold beer. That is true. And I will say as Americans, we drink at least most of our fermented beverages, probably a little too cold. That's been my experience. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, except for red wine. We drink red wine usually a little too warm, most of us, because we do serve it at our room temperature, which is generally going to be 70 to 73 degrees in anyone's home. Um, so a good general rule for red wine is uh, put it in the refrigerator 30 minutes before you're going to serve it. Chill it just a hair. We don't want it cold. We don't want this to be like 40 degrees cold like an ice cold Coca-Cola on a hot day. But we also don't want it to be actual American room temperature most of the time. Now, as far as beers, 
uh, lighter alcohol beers, especially some of the lighter alcohol mass produced lagers, those things are delicious. Cold. But you get to the porters, you get to the stouts. We also tend to serve those a little too cold. Mm. So with those porters, stouts, larger beers, even some of your IPAs, you're not going to get the IPAs getting more, at least in my opinion, getting more towards the, you know, the wine complexity of some of the uh, aromas and flavors. You want to pull that out a little bit and not serve it too cold. Um, as we do also our white wine. So I want to compare that to our white wine. So the red wines, put it in the refrigerator for a half hour before you serve. White wines, if they've been chilling for a while, whether it be, you know, three hours or three weeks, pull that shit out of the refrigerator a half hour before you pour it and let it, you know, let it warm up just a little bit because you're going to get more aromas. You're going to get more flavors um, off of those things. So there's there's a great medium there. So Jen, you've been to Europe. You've tasted beers on draft in Europe, right? Yes, uh, some I have. Of the stouts. And so mm-hmm. I, I I take Guinness for example. So here in America, you know, we judge a bar, especially an Irish pub, by the the Guinness that it that it pours, right? Um, most of those are too cold. Mm. You go to you go to Europe. I mean, particularly Ireland or even England or some of the stouts there what you're going to get is you're going to get something that we would consider more room temperature, which would be served at about actually about 55 degrees, which allows all of the flavors of that beer to come out. And also, even if it's warm, it, 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 it prevents you from like gulping that thing. Right. Well, let's, you know, and I, and I don't disagree, but let's take it back to storage real quick because storage if we're if you're going to a bar right mm-hmm. you're going to judge a bar on on a, a deep dark uh it's a, st- it's a stout guinness is a stout right sure yes yeah. it is and then um it's stored in a keg mm-hmm. and i i've been i've okay so when i drink guinness in the states no matter where it is and it's changed a little bit as i've gotten older but generally i view drinking guinness as licking the bottom of an ashtray in america well, that now, is terrible. you're going to the worst bars ever then. Well, I don't drink I don't drink big Guinnesses out at the bar very often. Now, I had Guinness in Dublin. I went to the factory mm. and I, I had Guinness there. Of course. That was mother's flipping milk. Right, but it wasn't it wasn't like ice cold. No, but they actually what they said and I asked, "Why does why does Guinness in America taste like licking the bottom of an ashtray and here in Dublin it tastes like mother's milk?" Mm-hmm. And they honestly answered they answered me in three three reasons and let's pray I can remember this cuz it was back in 2009. One of it was because uh the taps are cleaned more often and the the um uh, Guinness actually goes through and cleans the taps out locally in Dublin. The second one is number it's fresher like it's it's more direct to the source so it tastes a whole lot better the mm-hmm. third one is that they actually think we serve it too warm yes that is true so that, it's interesting and and going back to the storage in terms like how how well does a bar store or keep the temperature or regulate the temperature in a keg so it depends on the bar. So most bars are going to have all of their kegs in a in the same temperature refrigerator or walk in walk in fridge. Um, so they're all going to be roughly, to be honest with you, in America about thirty seven degrees or so. Mm. I mean, having worked in the industry, most of those walk in fridges for kegs. Now, some of those kegs will be in a walk in fridge that stores other food, so that's a necessity. If you go to a specific bar, and this is changing a little bit as we get some of these uh, these great tap bars. Uh, great beer bars uh, and right. around the country. Some of them will have separate walk-ins specifically for the beer, and some of them will even have separate walk-ins for specific types of beer. Um, now, that is an expensive, expensive notion. So t- sometimes as a consumer, we need to know if Guinness is coming out of the same walk-in fridge as um, Bud Light's, we probably want to let our Guinness warm up a little bit before we uh, gulp it down. Bud Light. Right. We probably uh, want. No. Nope. Yes. Oh, sorry. you're reading comments. I'm sorry. I didn't. <laughs> know 
the spot there, Jen. No, I was actually, we had a problem getting up on Periscope a little while oh, ago. So I'm just, I was just checking if we were up on Periscope and we are, but I do see that there's a lot of people checking us out today. Thank you, yeah. Carla, for coming back. I'm, I'm so proud to stub meet, stub meet someone new and then they keep coming back. So thank you <laughs> very oh. much. Uh, and I, I see Justin and Chris Kern and I saw. Stayed because of you, Jen. What? Yeah, Carla came because of me to the show the first time and then stayed because of you. I am pretty awesome. I'm I not mean, even going to lie. Obviously, I get I get very old very quickly. Like, I just wear on people. No one <laughs> wants to keep me around. <laughs> what are you drinking now, Stubb? Because we're going to go into the next place where we shouldn't store. Let's go with wine since you're drinking wine. Okay, great. Oh, you said the car. All right. Uh, shouldn't store wine. Uh, don't store wine in your effing kitchen. How about that? <sighs> Most people want to store wine in their kitchen mm. unless you have like an under counter, you know, the, the, uh, under counter actually refrigerator, uh, don't store wine on your kitchen counter. Don't store it near your stove or oven. Thank you. Don't or on top of your refrigerator, under your oven on the top of the refrigerator where all the lights coming in. Cause you love that natural light over the kitchen sink, you're getting light, you're getting heat from your refrigerator, whether mm -hmm. you know it or not. It's just terrible. Um, and most of the time, if you're storing it up there, you're storing it upright. And that's just, you know, not the best way to store wines. Now, I'm going to say this. Most of us buy wines to consume immediately. Yeah. Right, Jen? Yeah, we um, do. And most wines, especially, and this is American wines, European wines, any of the wines. Most of the wines we buy, most of us, are made to be consumed fairly young. Within two years these days yeah. of course so but even those wines if you're not going to drink that wine within a week put it somewhere dark find a closet uh, grab an extra case box from your local wine shop or abc store just throw it in a closet and yep. you could if you're going to drink it in a couple of weeks and store it up right great but just tump that thing on its side so those wines are sitting on their side because inevitably what's going to happen is you're going to you're going to have this case of wine or so for most of us, I think you're going to have a case of so of wine in your home, right? And you're not going to bottles. You're not going to consume. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but you're not going to consume that wine as quickly as you think you will, because you're going to find another wine at the at the local grocery store tasting or local bottle shop tasting. You're like, oh my gosh, I'll take home three of those. And before you know it, you have three cases of wine at home, <laughs> right? And you're not drinking them as quickly because you're always drinking the last thing you remember, right? Like the last thing on the tip of your tongue, the last thing top of mind is the thing you want to have the most, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say get extra case boxes, put that, put them in a closet, put them on their side, store those things horizontally um, because you're going to forget about a bottle or two here and there. Regardless of how many, regardless how many bottles you have, whether it be, two or 200 very very sound facts it's yeah. actually my very and i actually differentiate like i have some stuff that's up in my uh formal living room um that doesn't receive direct sunlight but that does have some sunlight and that right. that stuff is literally under 15 dollars. Yes. so i know i'm gonna drink that within the next year so i don't worry about it so there's longevity and there's like there's like a phased plan to this um but if you're thinking about drinking something early, Eric Guy actually made a recommendation on uh, on my Facebook page too. He he's always surprised when people are shocked at him when he says if you're going to drink it within 90 days, there's nothing wrong with storing a bottle of wine in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And especially a white wine. Definitely easy to store in a refrigerator and just know that you're going to enjoy it and it'll stay fresh and you'll be good to go. And um now once now once a bottle is open, what's the rule of thumb, Stub? You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, argument on this. For me personally, what I found is great, and once again, I've experimented quite frequently, obviously, uh, with wine. And I'm I'll go with red or white. Once a bottle's open, if you don't finish it, which seems ludicrous to me. However, on occasion, we've opened a second, third, fourth. 12th bottle that doesn't get completed in that evening's festivities you get red or white uh i would take oh y'all see these little caps right here yeah i would take one of these little vacuum vans or some kind Pump of up the jam 
I would pump up the jam. I would get the <laughs> oxygen out of there. As Jen and I both mentioned earlier, oxygen is a, uh, oh, uh, oxygen and wine. I mean, they're just, it's a nemesis thing. It's awesome. Um, I love it. They should make a cartoon about this for adults on, on uh, the night. The, what is it called? The I'm night here to help you breathe. No, you're here to kill me. Don't swim. Exactly. <laughs> But I would say red or whites uh, pumping off and then storing in the refrigerator is great because even with reds, even if you want to let that sit for a day or two. So I don't know. Say you got a Pinot Noir with uh, a great pork tenderloin on Monday. Mm -hmm. And then the next day you had some, you know, shrimp and you didn't want the Pinot Noir. But then on Wednesday, you grilled some chicken and wanted that Pinot with the chicken. I'll give you the same rule of thumb. Uh, pull that leftover Pinot Noir out about a half hour before you want to consume it. Um, and it'll be amazing. Like let it, let it cool off or warm up just a little bit rather. And it'll be great. I always recommend storing leftover wine in the fridge. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. If you've already opened it, get, get as much air out of there as you can and put it in the fridge and it'll be fine. And it'll actually last longer. It's, it's a general rule of thumb with any anything, right? What's that? It's the same reason reason we refrigerate anything. True. Beef, dairy products, uh, meat, any of the things we refrigerate, we refrigerate them to keep them for a longer period of time. Very the same true. will go for an open bottle of wine. The general rule of thumb is three days. And I don't think, uh, I think you can get away with a little bit more if you're taking the precautionary steps of refrigerating and uh, pulling out the air. You may get four to five on it, but stick with three days in any condition, as long as you're not leaving it exposed and open. Like if you put a cork in it, you can probably get away with three days on a red wine. Mm -hmm. If you put a cork in it and you put a white in the refrigerator, you're probably going to be okay with three days, maybe four or five, depending on how much, how many determining factors there are, how long, uh, how much acid, how, how much, uh, I don't know, complexity that there is to it. I feel like I'm at a loss of words. I just feel like uh, sturdier wines, uh, better a value or better price point, uh, more care, a little bit of aging tends to last a little bit longer than something that is a very uh, mass produced Sauvignon Blanc, for example, or Chardonnay. You're losing. I feel like you're losing everything on that in like two days, no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. And you buy you buy lower end wines, which let's be honest, most of us, even even super wine geeks, uh, you know, our daily drinkers are usually a little lower priced, uh, maybe produced at a larger scale. Um, so yeah, I, I recommend two to three days, period. I mean, it does it's it's wine dependent. If you open a if you open a Brunello that should have aged for 20 years and you opened it at two years, maybe that'll last longer in your fridge. I mean, it's it's all now that's crazy. If you open that wine, drink that <laughs> wine. Where are you gonna go with that? Because I don't, I don't advocate this. I'm just gonna back away from this. Drinking that wine and seeing how it changes. <laughs> yeah. So no, there are determining factors, but uh, refrigeration always helps. I, yes. I, I, I stand behind that 100. percent After you've opened wine, get as much air out of it as you can, and then refrigerate it. Yes. So Chris Fior says, if you drink wine like that and like on an everyday basis or so, and you're pairing it with different meals, he said, then buy a good quality boxed wine, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're out there. Chris, uh, if they're out there, and since I know you own a retail shop, put a link up there and what you recommend in term throw up a white and throw up a red and mm -hmm. let us know what you recommend, because I think there's a lot of people that may appreciate that. Uh, Rhett says, what are your thoughts on whiskey stones? I saw stuff? that. Uh, whiskey stones. I'm, hmm, I'm on the fence about them. <laughs> there you really, go. There's your answer. Moving no, on. No, I'm on the fence. <laughs> no, Red, I'm on the fence about whiskey stones. I've tried them. Um, I enjoy them for a little chill on a whiskey, uh, especially during the, you know, later spring, summer, uh, just for a little bit of chill. Uh, most of the time, though, depending on where you're storing your whiskey, and we're talking about this as well, don't store your whiskey in a garage. I mean, I do store at least one bottle of bourbon in the garage all the time. Um, however, most of the whiskey I have, I put inside, just inside. A um, little, little less difficult with spirits to store. I mean, you kind of put that anywhere that's not in direct heat or sunlight, you're going to be okay. The whiskey stones, I love that. I think the 
you know, they'll chill it down a bit to give you a little more aromatics. But I also know like traditional whisking, uh, whiskey tasting practices are to add just a, you know, drop or two of water to each uh, half ounce or ounce pour, uh, which will kind of help open up. And it does cool it off a little bit. Um, also whiskey stones, I think depending at some point, you're going to have drunks who are going to try to chew those things like ice cubes. And then you're going to be up for uh, lawsuits, which I think are terrible. So I, I much prefer ice cubes, but I prefer ice cubes in moderation uh, with my whiskey. How's that? Does that answer the question? That sounds okay. about right. We'll let Rhett, you'll have to join us in the after party and let us know if that actually answered the question. Because yeah, the we... cooling's great, but the ice, the use of ice cubes, I mean, people are like, oh, use the whiskey stone so you don't water down your whiskey. But the idea of putting ice in whiskey is not only temperature regulation, but also adding a little bit of water to help open up uh, some of the oils and aromatics in that whiskey, uh, specifically whiskey, um, when we're tasting uh, whiskeys. So yeah, I don't, I don't mind them. I have them. I've used them depending on the whiskeys I have that I don't want watered down at all. But I also use them in moderation with whiskeys that I absolutely know. So I wouldn't put them blindly in a whiskey that I've never tasted. I know I didn't get asked this question, but okay. I'm not necessarily a big fan of them because I appreciate the way a whiskey will change over time mm -hmm. with a uh, with a little bit of water. But that's sure. how I drink my nope. my whiskey. I taste it pure at first because yeah. I want to understand and I always want to see what it's supposed to be in its in its best state. Yes. And then uh, I like the big the big round uh, uh, ice balls. <laughs> Can't, no. get away, can't get away with this i, I like the big the bigger and more solid uh ice forms yeah. so that it st it drips off slowly instead of more rapidly in in crush cubes or smaller cubes but yeah i i like water in my whiskey you and khaleesi have that in common yay you like the big ice balls <laughs> we're just you're just waiting for a game of thrones pun aren't you weren't you that's that's where that was going. Yeah. Now this the, also the size of ice cubes. When we're talking now, we're talking about whiskey. So this is storage. Look, ultimately, <laughs> let's get back to storage. No, no, no. <laughs> I want to make this point though. Ultimately, where do we store all of our booze? Right in our belly. And I think a couple <laughs> people commented on the on the thing you put up earlier, Jen. Yeah, like uh, that, I would say fifty percent of like, people. And I'll be all like, "Yep, yeah, store the booze in your belly out. Drop the mic. I was gonna leave. I don't know. Tear off my shirt like the Rock. I don't know." Yeah. And uh, several people said that. But Lots of fat bastard memes. Thanks. <laughs> ultimately, we store the booze in our belly. We do. Uh, and we want it to taste the best going down, and that's the purpose of storage is is to make sure that once we consume our beverages. That they taste the best they can, right? Yeah. So you mentioned the big ice balls. I do. I, do, I like. I'm I like the big ice balls. Jon Snow gonna, style and all. Yeah, I'm not gonna make another pun about those. <laughs> I mean, I might, but <laughs> I'm afraid to look back over on Facebook now. Great. No, um, <laughs> so is you know, I, I asked this question: Are there any <laughs> different rules for storing spirits for longer periods of time? And I read up a little bit on it, and mm -hmm. one of the biggest differences and one of the biggest things that should you should consider mm -hmm. is those creamy liqueurs mm -hmm. those things those probably shouldn't be on your bar top right they should probably be stored in a refrigerator and probably shouldn't be kept around more than a year yes that is a great uh that's a great point actually yeah. i mean as as you know jen you've been here and people have probably seen photos at some point of us sitting around drinking or videos of me around my table have i i literally on three of one two yeah three of the four floors of my home i have adequate booze stored uh in some way shape or form so you get to the more sugary especially the creamier what you're gonna you're gonna get some crystallization you're gonna get a little bit of like I don't know. It's just staleness to me. It's not necessarily bad. So if you keep a bottle of Bailey's around for two yeah. and a half years, if it's not sitting in direct sunlight, I mean, that's not literally milk from the teat of a cow in there. You're going to be able to drink it. It's not going to murder you. It's not going to make you it's ill. Not gonna, it's not going to murder you. It's not going to grow legs it's and murder you. It's not going to taste great until you mix it with lime juice for that <laughs> cement mixer for your uh, own best front of me. Um, but yes, some of the creamier and more sugary -er, sugary -er, 
uh, spirits that you may have around specifically for mixing. And please tell me that that's the only reason they're around, not for straight sipping. Baking. I bake with um, Baileys all the time. Oh, no. All right. All right. I'm going to leave Baileys out of that. I will agree. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've baked with. Uh, it's a great additive. But, you know, you have some of the more sugary, even uh, clear spirits. Uh, those things. How many of us have gone to, like, mix a drink or like, oh, my gosh, we need, I don't know watermelon liqueur oh, God. You open it and you know it takes four people to twist the cap off the bottle because that sugar has hardened around the cap from the last time we made some novelty drink from that so those things like that and they're generally a little less expensive so it's okay with those but yeah you don't have to keep quite as much care i will say with your finer whiskeys tequilas your brown liquors more specifically uh, yeah, keep those out of light best you can and, yeah. and keep them at a moderate and a, even American room temperature. They're great. Uh, also realize like a bottle like this here, which uh, you see how full this is. So this is a little less than half full. This bottle, if you keep this for a while, is going to taste different than when you first opened it. Uh, you do get a little oxidation on the liquors. Um Generally, with the liquor, the hard liquor, it will smooth out a hair. So, you know, store the, just be aware of that. So don't, don't be upset if you don't get as much bite or there's a little bit different flavor profile when you go for your liquors if you've uh, stored a little bit here, whether it be in the original bottle or in a decanter, because I've experienced that as well. And depending on the humidity, I've also experienced this. I went for my last great sip of my finest scotch that I had. This was a couple of years ago. Uh, that I had in a decanter, and it was basically water because of the the humidity. And I probably should have had about an ounce and a half left in there. And what I ended up with was eh, just less than an ounce, and it was it seemed mostly water because of the humidity and condensation. Um, so yeah, keep keep these things as sort of airtight as you can. But even with that, you're not going to pump off most liquors. They're going to change over time. It's great. Yep. All right, That's we're going to wrap this up with. Two, yeah, we should. Two more things, Stub. Right, two more things. All right. What is another place you shouldn't store your wine? Get this one right. Uh, let's say um, uh, in a box with a fox. No, you gave me this one. What was the one you said earlier? Uh, I can't believe I got to spoon feed this to you. You do. No. All right. So you shouldn't store it. At your ex-girlfriend's house. See, the delivery would have been so much better <laughs> from Stubbs perspective. Damn it. I didn't think you got to that. Yeah. Don't <laughs> store your ex's house. What's gonna happen there is you're never ever gonna taste that shit again. Because <laughs> that bitch or asshole isn't gonna let you around it again. <laughs> so, you know what? We're gonna drink your best whiskey. And then we're gonna Instagram it and tag you on it while we're drinking it with our with with the with the uh, the person we hooked up with at the bar tonight. Mm -hmm. and F you. All right. <laughs> and in that vein, I'm going to move along. Don't store it at this guy's house. Right? This guy looks like he parties a little bit. Don't store your beverages oh, yeah. at a party friend's house. Mm -hmm. You will never see that stuff. And then you're in this awkward position where at least if it's an ex-girlfriend or boyfriend, you're just like, ah, I lost it in the... Oh. divorce the breakup whatever no at your friend's house you want to stay friends with them so you're like oh i'm just shit out of luck depends on what i left over there i mean and also i don't feel like i would have a hard time dumping that guy as a as a good friend <laughs> I mean, that's, that's me i'm loyal to a fault i promise you i will stand behind any of you listening right now for a long time but eh, unless you're that guy that unless guy <laughs> maybe needs a little work Maybe he needs a little work. All right, Stub. So I think I think we've cleared up quite a bit of information on storage wars, Perhaps. and and it all goes back down. It goes back down to the three basics, right? Yes. It's the enemy of your any storing of your beverages, right? Mm -hmm. Is heat, light, mm -hmm. and oxygen. That is so correct. doing the best as you can to avoid these things for mm -hmm. any beverage that you have that you're storing for longer than I would say what three months, right? Um, is going to help you out in the long run. And I hope through this very windy path where whiskey stones and Guinness kegs became part of the discussion that you have pulled something <laughs> from it. Any final thoughts, Stub? <laughs> oh. No, I'm good. <gasps> 
How about that? What? I'm just gonna let it go. No. All right. All right. Then I'm pull. You didn't even give me enough time to pull up the uh, after party link. <laughs> really? Oh, after party link. What we're doing now? Yes. Yeah, so there is an after party, oh. and I'm going to pu publish the the link in about two minutes. So please join us for the after party for a little while. And call next my week. Girl and have her reschedule me now. You're gonna call your girl. Yeah, because we have an after party. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for freeing up some time for everybody. Of course. <laughs> so uh, next week we're talking about fantasy wine destinations. You got to say it that way. You got to get fantasy. Mm, that <laughs> so uh, join us for the after party that's happening now. Please or do. we'll see you next Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Bye. Cheers, friends. <laughs>